What's up y'all, Brett Barley here with another tutorial and today we're gonna be diving in how to get the smallest barrel of your life. Now while we all want big barrels and good barrels, let's be honest, we have way more opportunity at little ones. So I'm gonna give you a huge tip for going front side and back side and the main things that are gonna help you glide through those tiny tubes. <laughs> So for those of you who don't know, I've done a few tutorials on barrel riding in the past, one that focused on how to take off late, and another that focused on barrel riding as a whole, front side and back side. Now we are diving into how to take all of that and turn it into like making the smallest barrel you've ever made. You know, those days where it's knee to waist high and it's pretty and tubing, but you can't figure out how to fit in them. You're like, I wish I was 12, I wish I was eight. Like if I was a little kid or GI Joe character, I'd fit in there you know, it's possible to fit in there. So we're gonna break down how to do it. And now both front side and back side, the main thing is the approach. You can't take off and just stall into these things and pull in and come out. Once in a while you can, but they're so small that if you start to stall into the barrel, nine times out of 10, it's gonna pass you by because as you hit the foam ball, there, there's no room to maneuver there and you're just gonna sink and lose speed. So the main thing is to take off behind it. You have to get locked into your position with speed to be able to glide through it. If you try and slow yourself down or make adjustments in the tube, you're gonna go down. So I have some clips pulled up on the computer. Let's dive into some backside waves first and then we'll do the front side and wrap it up from there. So here we have a clip shot from the water of me stalling and then you see me let go to ride through this barrel. Now we're gonna look at a couple examples and then we'll break down positioning. From the land, you see me the same way of stall and then right here, I stop stalling to shoot through that section. Now, if I would have taken off and ridden to this section and then tried to slow down, the way the way of steepness is, I would have gotten caught up in the curve and basically just sucked back into it. So it was important to slow down first and then ride through. And that allowed me to come right out. Here's another example showing the exact same thing. Stall, look you see me. Taking off in the barrel section I'm looking at is gonna happen up here. So I know in my head I need to slow down first and then shoot through. So look, I drag my butt in the wave to slow down and then right there I stop so that I can shoot through this tiny little section. And look how small it gets there at the end and I'm still I mean, you can see my head through the wave and the nose of my board. I can't be more than what, 18 inches off the top. Come out. So here we have a tail mount shot that shows exactly where your back foot is gonna need to be. So as I'm taking off, this isn't a super tiny barrel, just to be clear. But as I'm taking off, you see my foot, you know, pretty perpendicular to the stringer and, you know, dropping knee, getting super low but then I move it up. The main thing right here is that on the drop, it's further back. And then as I go forward, I pull it up. This is because you want most of your weight to be further up on the board. The further back you are, the slower you'll go, the more that you'll get caught up in the foam ball and lose speed and well, just not come out. So after I've adjusted, look, I adjust my foot up right there. And then even more so, now look at the angle my foot's at. I'm basically on my big toe, which is pretty funny. Um, but right there, my foot is about at a 45 from the stringer. I'm like almost on the top of my foot, which is hilarious. Just all this to get my back leg as low as I can. This is gonna allow me to drop my butt as close to the board as possible, allowing me to get lower. Now this barrel wasn't super small, so we're not gonna use that as a total example. But that tail mount gave you a good perspective of how your back foot should be. Now here's another example of the same thing, but looking straight on. I take off and my foot, let's rewind this a little bit. My foot is at that same 45 to the board. You know, typically when you're surfing, you'll notice that your pressure dings aren't like per perpendicular to the stringer, they're kind of offset. It's because your foot shouldn't be totally sideways. So right here, you see me with my foot kind of pointed, you know, towards the other rail. And then as I pump, I grab my rail, 
Now I'm, this is me setting up to ride through the tube. My back foot is positioned. It's hard to see, but it's back on my grip pad from the pump and then I pull it forward. Look, on that pump right there, I scooted it forward. Boom, pull my back foot up the, on the board a little bit and I turned my front foot. Watch my front toes. See that shift right there? See where my big toe is? Boom, turned my foot sideways. Now it's almost parallel with the stringer. And I'm starting to get over my chest, holding my rail. And this is the point where I start tucking my head and my chin down towards my knee, dropping my back knee down towards the board and behind my back arm. And then also turning my front arm to be pointed back behind me. And then as I go through the barrel, I get lower and lower. I have more weight over my chest and my head that's like basically over the front third of my board. And what's happening is my back arm here is holding on. And in that holding on, I'm, I'm allowing my upper half to lean forward to have weight on that front foot to drive me through. And I'm just using my arm that's grabbing the rail to keep me from falling forward. And then my back arm is behind me so that as I like hit the face of the wave, you know, it just flops. If I had it in front of me or next to me, I don't have as much room to fit up against the curve of the wave compared to if I put it behind me and then I can fit that curve. Shoot right through it. And then as I come out, adjust my feet back. Here's another example looking straight in. I don't actually make this wave. I just like that you get to see exactly what I'm doing. Hold on, let's rewind it a hair. So as I take off, my foot's normal, you know, kind of pointed towards the other rail. And then I take that pump right there. And as I take that pump, I, I'm going into my position. You kind of, you can see my uh, body change. It's like my knees right up against my arm, this knee and my chest are extended. And then right here, I'm dropping my knee, back knee down towards the deck, and my front foot pointed forward. And now, I'm fitting the curve of this tiny little wave. You know, if I was just grabbing my rail and holding on and looking over my shoulder, the thing would just cap me in the back of the head. It's all about hugging the face of the wave and fitting that curve. Now, I didn't make this one, I was too deep, but I just thought this gave you a great representation of the type of position you're in. Again, you can see my foot and where all my weight is over here, basically just riding this rail, the front portion of the board. And the only thing holding me back is my uh, hand and then my back arm or my front arm is behind me. And this is all allowing me to go streamline through that little barrel. Unfortunately, I was just too deep. <laughs> and here's the final example. This is one of the smallest ones I have on film. <laughs> I don't film, just to be clear, I don't film when it's like knee to thigh high, really ever. So I had to go digging through a lot of footage to find these waves where like I caught a super small one on like a normal day. But here you see me setting up. This is a perfect example of rolling in. Setting up, my feet are all normal, and then I'm gonna grab my rail first and then adjust my front foot. As you saw there, look, as soon as I grab my rail, turn my foot, front foot, I'm getting my back foot down and my knee over the board. And then as I'm going into the barrel, I start leaning my chest down. And as I get in, I go lower and lower and lower. Because you don't want to go too low too soon because then you, you're, it's a weird, you're almost using that momentum of going lower as like a compression that like gets you through the barrel. I, I don't know how to explain it, but that's, you just want to time like dropping down over your knee with like the last second. Because other, once you're locked into that position, you can't move. So right here, I can't move. And so then you just hold on through that portion and then readjust as you come out. It's all about the approach and then crouching down into that position to ride through and coming out. If you do the position too soon, you won't have the momentum to drive through. You won't have the angle, you know, if you, once you set up in that position, there's not really any maneuvering you can do, especially as small as the barrel is. So it's important to pick your line and then drop into that position at the last second. Now, just for reference, because it's hard to see in the video, I'm gonna show you a real world example of me in my yard on my surfboard. Although this isn't like technically that realistic, um, it'll give you a good example of how your feet and hands and neck and head should be. So as we see here, I'm going into grabbing my rail. And as soon as I grab my rail, I'm gonna angle my front foot forward. 
which is gonna allow me to you know, open up my front leg and tuck my knee down. It's then also, as I, my front foot goes forward, gonna allow my back leg to drop down into the position it needs to be. And the closer to the board my knee can get, the lower that my butt and my chest can get. At this point, I've been pointing where I'm going and then I'm gonna drop my arm back behind me, which is gonna allow me to lean into the barrel even more, like into the face of the wave, and get more streamlined so that if the lip or the face catches my shoulders, it doesn't catch my arms and throw me off balance. And then as I'm driving into the tube, I drop my chin and my head down and my chest over my knee and begin compressing as much as I can. The harder and further you lean down, the more you have to pull with your back arm to keep that rail up and to keep your weight from going over the board. But remember, it only lasts for a second. Just hang on and you'll shoot through. So anyway, guys, that's diving into the backside aspect of it. I believe personally you can fit into a smaller backside barrel than you can a frontside barrel, but it's kind of maybe a little more difficult, I would say. But now it's time to dive into doing it front side, which is definitely more simple. Um, and I think that the tip is one of those just like, poof, like once I realized I did this and I started telling friends, they were like, oh my gosh, I never thought of it like that. And I never really did either. Like it wasn't until a few years ago that I really started applying this in super small tubes and started having better success. So here we're gonna dive into the lefts. Here's an example from Slater's Wave Pool. Now, full disclosure, when we were at Kelly's Pool a year and a half ago, they were running some test waves at like a smaller size. It was still barreling, but they were tiny. And so this was a perfect time to apply what I'm telling you here. So as you see me setting up, just cruising in, you know, my elbow and my arm are outside of my knee, nothing abnormal here. But as I get ready for the barrel, watch, I'm squatting down. And normally when you would squat down, your knee would come to your chest and your elbow would be outside. That only allows you to go so low. You got your knee to your chest and your head above and you can't get but so small. So this is the big thing. Get your shoulder and your elbow tucked inside of your knee. Watch right here. I drop my elbow and my shoulder inside of my knee. That allows me to basically drop this knee almost to the surfboard. My back knee drops way down and it allows me to get much, much smaller and in a more streamlined position to the tube. Compared to if my chest was over my knee and my head would be out here, I wouldn't be able to get as close to the wall. And then I was able, it also allows you to stall better too. So in this instance, it's not a super tiny tube, but the position is what's critical. I wouldn't have been able to run through that in a normal barrel position. In a normal barrel position where my arm's on the outside of my knee, I would have got clipped by that lip. I would not have made that wave. Here's an example of doing it wrong. I take off and my arm's on the outside of my knee and I never got it, I never got my arm all the way on the inside of my knee. I needed to open this front knee out so that I could drop my arm and my shoulder down. And what happened because I didn't do that was the lip just constantly was hitting me in the shoulder and in the head because I couldn't get that small. The barrel was small enough for me to fit in, but I messed it up. You see that whole time I'm just getting clobbered by the lip. You might say, oh, it's a tiny wave. Well, you'll see in a second why this is a failure here. And it's because I didn't have that arm on the inside of my knee. Here's another wrong example of not getting my arm inside of my knee. Now look, first of all, I'm doing everything with my back leg right. I got my foot rolled over, my knee dropped down towards the deck, but my leg, my front leg is angled towards the face of the wave. You wanna point that thing more towards the nose so you can drop your shoulders and your elbow down. On this one, I got into some weird positions to make it happen, but it wasn't as optimum as it could be. Look, I even tucked my head down, that way it wouldn't hit me. And yes, it did work, but it's not ideal. So here we have what I would say is kind of the perfect example of a front side tiny tube. Take off, arms on the outside of my knee, but I adjust, you see that? I was stalling, and while I was stalling, I realized how small the barrel would be, so I lifted my arm up and moved my knee out so that then I could drop down in this position. I got my back knee going down towards the deck, my back foot is over on the rail, my shoulder is about where my knee is, but on the inside. And this allows me to fit in this super little barrel. 
if we rewind and look at where what would happen if my knee was underneath my chest and my arm was on the outside you see my knee is right here so if my chest was above it the lip would be hitting me in the face wouldn't work but because i have my knee on the outside of my arm and my shoulder i'm able to drop my upper half down to my knee's height so basically you can fit into a barrel that is knee high pretty much made that one and then this is the same thing this is a little bit better example i came into this one with some speed so here we'll start right here my back foot's normal my front foot's normal we'll go frame by frame i move my foot up a hair and over towards the rail it's kind of hard to see but over towards the rail i take my arm and i get it inside of my knee and this allows me to duck down into this super little barrel. And then readjust as you come out. So to show you another real world example of me on my surfboard in the yard, which isn't real world, but it is what it is. So you can see better than these clips. Again, I don't ever film when it's this small. I had to dig really hard to find these couple waves. <laughs> But let's take a look at positioning once again. So you get your back foot up and towards the rail a little bit so that you can be heavy on your toes holding that rail because unlike backside, you're not grabbing your rail. So this is relying super heavy on your toes strength. Then you adjust and get your front arm inside of your knee. And at this point, you can start tucking your head and shoulders down and in towards the wave and moving your front knee out to fit. This position is much easier to hold and you can do it way easier than you can backside. But again, even front side, it's all about position. Now front side, you could put your hands on the face of the wave and stall a little bit and get away with it compared to backside, where I would definitely not recommend putting your butt in the wave because you'll just slow down too much. But for the most part, it's the same principle of wanting to set up your tube and then get into this position at the last second as you pull into it. If you're trying to make these adjustments while you're in it, there won't be room, you're gonna get clipped, it's not gonna work out. So you wanna have these positions dialed as you pull in. But that pretty much sums it up. I know this isn't really like crazy in depth, but it's honestly simple things. Front side, the main thing is getting your front arm and shoulder inside of your leg. Most people don't do that. I didn't used to do that. That makes a huge difference. And then backside, the main thing is getting your front foot pointed like almost parallel and holding on and letting your weight go over your front knee. And basically you're just all your strength is in your front foot and your arm that's holding the rail. Your back foot just is like a balancing point. And that's really it. It's, it's all about contorting into these small positions to shoot through the tube. There's really no other scenario because when it's that small, that's what you have to do to get barreled. It's not technical. There's no air dropping into things. There's no whatever. It, it just, it is what it is. Once a barrel is that tiny, that's what you do. But there are ways to get into even smaller barrels, even smaller barrels than the ones I've shown you. And I would say the next step from what I just showed you on front side and back side would be kneeboarding. When you're kneeboarding, you can get much lower and fit into the tiniest of tubes. And it's all about that vision, right? It doesn't matter how you get it. It's just all about getting it. That one I didn't make, but look at this. Onto my knees, I'm able to drop down ridiculously low, like lower than I could if I was standing up, and I'm getting the full barrel vision. What more can you ask for of a knee high wave? And I made it. You can make barrels on your knees, guys. And it's honestly kind of fun. So that's like my threshold is like, oh, if I look at a wave and, and no, I can't fit even in the, you know, drop knee position or whatever, those front side and back side techniques they give you, then I resort to just kneeboarding. That is, you know, the next way to get the smallest barrel of your life. And then the last resort option would be laying down because, you know, you're laying down. You can get a much smaller barrel laying down than you can standing up or even on your knees. Just lay down. I would say though, getting on a boogie board is like 100% last resort. But if you can get on a boogie board and get a little barrel, you know, what, what more can you ask for? If you can get barreled in a given day, regardless of how you do it, that's what matters.
So anyway, you guys, that's the gist of it. We have wrapped it up now, how to do it front side, back side, on your knees, laying down, getting the smallest barrel of your life. As silly as that sounds, who cares? You can just be the grumpy mid thirties dude who's like, ah, that's child's play. I'm not going out there. Like that's not even good. Or you could go out there and get barreled and laugh at that guy because he's blowing it. So hope you hope this helps with you guys. It's pretty hard to teach how to get into the positions I was showing you both front side and back side, but with some practice, keep at it. Remember, just keep front side, keep your shoulder in back side, point your foot forward, get all your weight over your knee, duck your head down. And as long as you aren't keeping your head up and keeping your body parallel to the wave, you'll be good to go. It's all about just streamlining through that tube and being prepared. Anyway, I'm gonna let you guys go. Leave a comment with what you think about the techniques I've shared. But most importantly, if you put these techniques into practice and they work for you, let me know because I love hearing it. When I did those other tutorials, it just constantly gets me psyched to hear people telling me about new barrels that they've gotten because of those videos. So hope this helps you out and I'll see y'all in the water. Yeah.